Now we're rolling back again. I'm Jason, as always, my co-host, Mr. Zach Partridge, back in the house after two awesome Fighter Spotlight podcasts for our Fierce Fighting Championship card on June 25th. This is going to be some good fights, man. It's going to be good. We got Coach at BYU bringing the BYU football team up. Whew. It's going to be a good night, man. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I just saw I, – I noticed that Dutch a lot. I feel like there's a growing frustration between yeah. judges maybe and refs about the criticism. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> – this is the craziest criticism I ever had, I ever saw on Bar. I think it was Barstool on TikTok. And the one guy goes, the one guy goes, on last week's stoppage of uh, uh, Volkov and uh, Rosa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one guy goes, yeah, in the moment, I thought it was a good stoppage. But when I when it slowed down and I saw the replay, when it was slowed down, that was pretty bad. Like, Herb D needs to be better than that. And I'm like, Wait a second. So he has to be better than you. Yeah. When you so, get to see different camera angles, slow down, stop, and make the judgment. But live, you thought the same thing he did. I'm like, man, it's these just, people are crazy. It's just like the they, them not knowing the the scoring criteria. It's like it's online. You can look it up online and see what the scoring criteria is. So, I, I would suggest that. Um, Dana White included. I know Dana he White, pretty, yeah, pretty vocal about this. Mm-hmm. If promotions and promoters, and me and you actually had to talk about this uh, at the last Fear Show because me and you keep some of our opinions to ourselves, but sometimes we do have pretty strong opinions. Yes, get, get said loudly, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you, as promoters and promotions, you. I think you have to be careful. Because if the job becomes too thankless, they go away, then what do you do? Yeah, exactly. You have two options. Don't do shows or you're going to have to start paying them significantly more because, you know, every job has its bull crap that you have to deal with. Yeah. It's just whether the bull crap is worth it or not. You're going to get to the point where the bull crap's not worth it and then they're going to stop refing and they're going to stop judging. And yeah. then you're going to have to fly people in from out of state or, or whatever. Like – if by handling it wrong, you could promotions could really start hurt it, shooting themselves in the foot all across the country. Yeah. Like what if an athletic commission, what if the UFC wanted to come to town to a venue? And I know they don't have this problem. Like this is, this is dumb, but I'm just saying it because everybody knows the UFC, but, and the, the place said, yeah, we don't have any judges that want to, we don't have any judges that they want to do it for you because last time you ripped the judging kind of unfairly because they, they judged it based off the criteria and you just didn't like it. Yeah. And the UFC's like, well, thank. Well, that's fine for the UFC. One, they'll bring in their own. Or two, they'll just fly in whatever. They don't care. They, they, they can cover that expense. But guess what? Small regional shows can't do that. No. I I wish there was a way that people could listen to the, the phone call that you and I had an opportunity to be on with the California State Athletic Commission and listen oh, yeah. to – how in depth these judges and referees go into making sure that they make the right calls. Like listen to them explain like why a judge judged a certain fight a certain way and him explaining it. And you're like, okay, I could see it as, as that, you know what I mean? It's like, so you and I, you and I could look at a fight and you could see it a totally different way. And we have before because we've, we've argued about it on texting when we're watching the fights. Yeah, and I'm I right every see, time. I could see something, but we know that's bullshit. But we can, <laughs> yeah, we see something totally different. It's you, you're going to get different views, but at, at the heart of it, there's a there's a set standard, and the number one thing in the judging criteria is damage. Who's causing? Who's inflicting the most damage? So, I mean, so. Here, let's see. Local judges, it's almost a yeah, I yeah, exactly. That's it's gonna and they're gonna drive it to that point. Do our judges get I don't think our judges get criticism? I mean, I don't I haven't like, seen it. When they point. get booed, okay, so like when they got booed during the Sebastian Yeah, but that, kind, like is like, that more of a hometown homer like booing their guy or I don't know, but nobody should have been getting booed. That's true. Yeah. Um, the, but the, so, so here's the conversation that I like to have now. And that I think that 
more fans should understand and recognize. If you don't like, now you have one, you have to be able to identify the, the, the judging criteria, right? And it's alarming how many, we keep saying it over and over and I'm going to keep saying it until people listen, but it, it's alarming how many people don't know the judging criteria. The argument should not be, did the judges score it correctly? Yeah. The argument should be, is the judging criteria correct? I've read it multiple times. I, I think it's pretty, it's, I don't know if you could adjust it more. Maybe these I know, I'm, but, I, but what I'm saying is like, like there's rules. Sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes whoever's enforcing the rule. Yeah. Don't shoot the messenger. He's just enforcing the rule. Go, yeah. go have your problem with the rule and have to start a conversation about, you know, you know, I, I've heard people say this before and I agree with it. I think an eye poke should be an automatic one point. And people are like, well, what if it's not intentional? Not, um, not meaning to doing something is a lot easier to get away with than just making sure something doesn't happen. I think a lot of eye pokes go away. If you go, no matter what, if you poke the eyes, it's a point. It's kind of like getting a speeding ticket. If you're speeding, you start giving tickets. Well, no, I don't want to do that because I got out of a speeding ticket last week. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm, I'm a vet. I can do whatever, whatever I want. Yes. Everybody, Jason gets to drive like a maniac because he's a vet. Um, <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Like, I, it really, like, made me start thinking about um, – the, it really made me start thinking about the a lot of that stuff where it's just like you know like like I said the judging isn't perfect I think the whole I, I think the judges are better than we give them credit for yeah but I think that there's things in the judging system and process that needs to be improved what if you had the judges at the post fight press conference and the report talked about that? I think that's a pretty tough spot to put them in. Um, put them in there, put Dutch in there. <laughs> if I, I mean, I like I, that's what I first said, but I, I, t I told uh, I told Scott that we asked Scott that, and Scott said, Well, some judges too, like they're not articulate enough, like somebody like Dutch, I think, would have been. Or Steven, they're both like they I think they would be fine up there fielding questions and explaining why they scored something the way they did. But and and I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but there might be some judges that just aren't comfortable and articulate enough that they just get eaten alive by some reporters too. Yeah. We're the best we've ever been. Yeah, I, I think so too. The the model I think so. I, I think I think that um I think that the biggest like I said, I think the real issue is there's things there's things in the judging criteria the 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 fact that it's a 109 system the same as boxing MMA is, has way more factors on like the again this isn't a fault of the judges but like the difference between a almost 108 round and 109 round and then a razor thin round that could go either way and it, it's a 10-9 round and scored the same like i could so we, we could come out jason and i could absolutely dominate you in the first round of a fight not a 10-8 round but clearly dominate you 10-9 and then the second round could come back and we can go back and forth and be razor thin and you just barely eked it enough to to, to win that round yeah you, you know what i mean like but it still scored the exact same that I could have a dominant 10, nine round and, but and you can have like a, a razor thin 10, nine round. Yeah. Like that's, that's a problem in the system, not a problem with the judges. Yeah. I agree though. Dutch, you, you guys, the behind the scenes work that these guys do, it's, it's amazing. Should we break down this card? Yeah. I like let's, this card a lot. Let's do it. This is a fun card. All right. First up, we have bum, 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 bum. we have Ramona Pascal against Jocelyn Edwards. Pascal is six and three. She stands five foot seven with a 66 inch reach. Jocelyn Edwards is 10 and four. She stands five foot eight with a 70 inch reach. 
Who do you like, Zach? I don't like either of them. I don't like the featherweight division in women's. Um, so this this fight was actually supposed to be at uh, one thirty five, and they moved it up a couple weeks ago. Well, that's great. Um, so somebody couldn't make weight, so that's fine. Um, uh, you know, Ramona got absolutely dominated in her first fight with the UFC. She took it on short notice against Nunes. Um, Can I throw some stats at you. Six, 67% of Ramona's fights have won by KO. 60% of Jocelyn's fights have won by KO. So it's obviously going to a decision. To a decision because average fight time is 15 minutes for both girls. The, diff, the biggest difference is going to be in the grappling and takedown department where Ramona is going to have the edge on that. So I, I, I would actually say I, I like Edwards to outpoint her for a decision. I don't hate it. Matter of fact, I am going to go with you on that one. Dang it. I know. I know. Fight card. Let me go back here. I'm changing up the, the way that I'm looking at these stats. So I'm going to be able to give you guys a little bit more on the stats on this. All right. Next up, we got the Dragon Girl. Liang Na against Silviana Gomez Juarez. Na is 19 and 5. She stands 5 foot 5 with a 67 inch reach. And Juarez is 6 and 4. She stands 5 foot 4 with a 64 inch reach. Who do you like in this one, Zach? Again, I like neither of them. I don't love this fight either. Um, there's 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 weird things about both of these fights. Uh Nin Liang, she's 0 and 1 in the UFC. Um, she came in on a five fight winning streak, which everybody was like, Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Her last five opponents before the UFC, Oh, and Oh, two and Oh, two and two, four and two and Oh, and one. She has 24 fights and she's fighting people with no more than six fights. You know, like I'm like the competition. And then when she was fighting, um, you know, shot Mariah, fought Mariah Agrapova, got knocked out. Um, in Bellator, she lost via armbar. I just, she's lost out of her five losses. She's been finished in four of them. And I, so, and, and I, so I feel like when she fights tougher competition, she loses and gets finished. Okay. And, but Juarez isn't exactly a world beater herself. Um, but I, I do give her the advantage and I would have to go with, uh, with Juarez on this one, she was beating Vanessa DePopolis pretty good until she got caught in that armbar. Um, losing to Lupita Go- Go- Godinez, we both like Lupi a lot. That's not a bad loss. Um, Ariana Lipsky on the regional mm-hmm. tour, not a bad loss. Even though she's 37 years old, I- I'm going to go with giving her the slight advantage and picking her to win this fight. I agree. I think her experience is going to be the difference in this one. I think she's bought the better competition. Like you said, she fought Ariana Lipsky. Uh, she fought Pollyanna Botello on the regional scene as well. Um, I think that experience will be the difference in that one. So, And she is the slight favorite at one, minus 135. The comeback is plus 115 All right. um, for Nay. So, uh, and then on the first fight, just so you know, Jocelyn Edwards was a minus 160 favorite. I like time that fight. Time out real quick. Okay. I'm looking on Tapology. It says it's tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Isn't this a morning card because it's in Singapore? No, it's going to be morning in Singapore. It's going to be Sunday morning in Singapore. Tomorrow here, tomorrow night here. Does that make so sense? So it'll be tomorrow night here. So tomorrow's fights are going to be in the. They're going to be fighting in the morning, Sunday morning in Singapore. That sucks, man. I want so to watch fights tomorrow. <laughs> So they actually get a little, that would be nice. So they actually get a little bit more time to rehydrate, fuel up a little bit. I wonder well, that's, if that's cool, but it doesn't give me what I want. What do you what about want? Me? What about my wants? <laughs> you want to get it over with early so you can enjoy the rest of your Saturday? Yeah. I, dude, I love Saturday after morning and afternoon cards. Be nice. Or very Let's nice. Let's go back to Fight Island, please. Ooh, I like that. On with the next. All right. On with the next. In the Bantamweight division, we got Mr. Perfect. Young Ho Kong against Batagral Dana. Kong is 17 and 9. 
He stands five foot nine with a 73 inch reach. Dana is 12 and three. He stands five foot seven with a 70 inch reach. Who do you like on this one, Mr. Partridge? I, I, I have a very sophisticated reason on this one for why I'm picking Dana. Talk to me. You know why? Why? He's training partners with the Mongolian. He's coming up to fight for a 155 belt. They train together at Jackson Week. They're both Mongolian. They're friends. There's a picture right now of them together in a hotel room. Like, what? our Mongolian is friends with Dana. I'm going with Dana. Dang it. I'm still not going to change my pick. I'm going to go Kong on this one. I, I was going to go Kong until I saw Dana on one of the Mongolian's posts. But I, I do I, like that. It's pretty freaking cool. Like, I wouldn't bet this one because I don't know enough, but I'm going with the Mongolian on this one. Hey, I'm a little partial to Mongolians now. Hey, uh, as you should be, Zach. As you should be. Um, Dana is actually a minus 135 favorite. Plus 115 is the comeback on Khan. All right, next up in the middleweight division, we got Brendan Allen versus Jacob Malkoon. Allen is 18 and five cents, six foot two with a 75 inch reach. And Malkoon, six and one, stands five foot nine with a 73 inch reach. Does Brendan Allen um, get a win here? He needs a win here. He does need a win here. He, he did win his last fight against Sam Alvey, but Sam Alvey it's no longer Sam Alvey. Alvey. He's no he has longer lost, the like, hasn't had a win in like, nine fights you know what i'm impressed with malcoon because he you remember how he looked like crap against phil hawes right and then he and, comes and brendan well he didn't look like crap he got knocked out in like eight seconds yes and who's phil hawes's training partner yeah who is phil hawes's training partner brendan allen now oh yes brendan allen a huge favorite in this fight too so and just, I know you didn't watch the weigh-ins, just so you know, Brendan Allen wore one of the fur hats. Just saying. I don't care. Just saying. He's not doesn't Russian. Work for, doesn't work for what? the white Okay, hats. so he's doesn't white work. and he has tribal tats and now he's trying to be Russian? What's going on here? He wore one of the, like, uh, tracker hats, like the beaver hat type thing with the little tail on the back. I'm out. Malcoon. <laughs> uh, you know so, what? So... So I actually, okay. So I've crapped on Malcoon quite a bit on this podcast. Oh, we both have. And um, he was getting absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree by AJ Dobson until AJ got tired. Yep. Because Malcoon did something very well. Stayed in his face and he wrestled him. He, he can wrestle. I'll give he him can that. He can. I did not give him much credit for it. And against somebody like Phil Haas, I understand D1, Iowa State wrestler, probably wasn't going to out-wrestle Phil Haas, got knocked out, went really quick. But Malkoon showed that he's tough, he's durable, and he can wrestle. Brandon Allen, his last couple losses to Sean Strickland and Chris Curtis, right? And why did he lose those fights? Because they stayed in his face and they pressured him. Brandon Allen needs space to get his offense off. Like Malcoon doesn't give people space and he kind of smothers them. Legitimately, Brendan Allen should win this fight. I might be wrong on this, but I am picking Malcoon for a big upset this fight. Damn it, I thought I was going to get you on this one. I thought for sure you were going to pick Brendan Allen. I actually like Malcoon. Everything you just said, I literally was thinking the exact same thing. And I'm not just saying that. I'm going to go Malcoon from the upset in this one, too. I, I don't hate it. I do not hate it. Like, right. I wouldn't touch Brendan Allen at minus 300 with no. a 20-foot pole right now. I, you're going to put some respect on the Mamba name after this one. Mamba Malcoon, put some respect on it after this. And, and I will say to Malcoon's credit, I've been crapping on him. He's gotten better every fight. There's a chance, there's a chance that he just got caught against Phil Haas and that if that fight – kept going he gave phil haas trouble he looked phenomenal at the weigh-ins too i that that made me even more confident seeing him at the weigh-in so I, i'm with you on that one. Oh, by the way he's not traveling halfway across the world he's just flying up from australia to singapore too where alan had to travel all the way across the world he's gonna have the hometown crowd here because every, every all those all those uh guys from australia on this card got a big pop at the weigh-ins yeah um next up where are we at in the what division are we in on this next fight? Before I pull it up. 
sorry, I'm switching. Lightweight around. division. We're in the lightweight division. All right, we have Mahishet again. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his first name. Mahishet versus Steve Garcia. Mahishet is six and one, stands six foot tall with a 71 and a half inch reach. Steve Mean Machine Garcia. He is 12 and four, stands six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. Who do you like in this one? So this one's very weird. I think I'm leaning towards Steve Garcia for one specific reason. Um, the Chinaman is very young. He's 22. His win on the Dana White Contender Series was a very good and impressive win. It was the first time he beat somebody with a winning record, though. First person from China to win on the Contender Series and get a contract, too. That's good. Um before that, in China, his record of opponents, 0-2, 10-15, and 15, 0-2, 0-0, 10-12. -0, and then he lost to an 0-1 guy in his debut. Maybe just had a good night, put things together. Secondly, you've been saying it for a long time. I kind of pushed it to the side. I did see a stat. Fighters coming from the Dana White Contender Series do not have a great record in their first two fights in the UFC. It, it kind of seems like if they can get things right after that, they can get going. I think the I think the Dana White Contender Series is good and it's valuable. I think that there is a chance that it is they are bringing in a lot of guys into the UFC that aren't ready for the UFC yet. That are usually one or two fights away still of experience before they get to the UFC. I I actually think Steve Garcia. Um, should be a lot heavier favorite in this fight. And I, I think he cruises to a decision. I actually think he finishes him. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Steve, I don't hate that. I'm going to go Steve Garcia by decision. Um, and let me just throw out a little stat here, Zach, because I have some cool stats that I just want to brag about real quick. 75% of his, his wins have been by KO. Also, um, Ricky Teresios, the winner of the ultimate fighter, Steven Garcia was his first loss. Boom. So we both like Garcia on this one. I any, actually really like Garcia a lot on this one. Any anything, any bets you see that you like so far on any of the fights we've discussed already? Or, or um, the, the the two that I, I would I would sprinkle some on Malcone. Steve Garcia is the first one that I'm 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 confident in. When you're talking about um betting odds and a line, getting him at minus 170. I, I think he should probably be closer to like minus 220 to 250. I think you're getting a lot of value in Steve Garcia on that fight. Steve Garcia, he's minus 180. Let me see what. So you said by decision, right? I like him. I, by I don't even know. I, I probably wouldn't. If I was to pick how it won, I probably would bet by. Uh, I would probably bet by, by TKO or KO. Yeah, I'm going to bet if I, – actually, I really like this. I like Garcia um, wins inside the distance was – I just had it up. In, plus 120. Yeah. I like that. that. Put me down for that right now. Mm -hmm. Chalk me up on that one. All right, so we both like Garcia. We haven't disagreed yet, only on the one. Uh, next up, we have Xiong Hu Cho against Joshua Kulaba. Cho is 10 and 4. He stands six foot tall with a 74 and a half inch reach. Kulabao is 9, 1 and 1, stands 5 foot 10 with a 73 inch reach. Ooh, oh, Choi is actually a pretty big favorite on this. He's minus 235 to come back, plus 190 for Kulabao. Who do you like on this one, Mr. Park Church? Um, man, I, 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 I like Choi a lot. He, he left a really big impact on me when he fought Julian Arosa. Mm -hmm. When he was landing those punches, like the way he cracks, he, that was, yeah. The sound that it makes when he lands, it just thudded different. You know what I mean? Yep, I know exactly. And I have a hard time, and I know he lost to Alex Caceres, but Alex Caceres went on a nice little tear there and. I just think he ran into a buzzsaw. His other losses in the UFC was Gavin Tucker, who he dropped in that fight, right? Evilov, who cares? Evilov beats everybody. And those are his losses in the UFC. 
being able to not just beat Julian Rosa gives me high stock on somebody, but but he he kind of smoked him. Yep. I I don't know if I love minus two for forty for Choi. I don't know if that I, that might be a little bit too much. I don't know if there's a ton of value there, um, but I, I definitely think he wins the fight. Okay. Uh, What's him by knockout? Him by knockout is plus one seventy five. Inside the distance is. Yeah, plus. Josh, Josh has never been finished, so. That would be that would be tough. It goes the distance is minus one fifteen. But like yeah. you said, he can crack. I almost want to. I almost like the KO prop on this one. He can. You, you might have talked. You might have talked me into that one on that. Uh, all right. So we're both on Chow on this one. Choi. Choi. Sorry. Choi. We're both on Choi on this one. All right. Next up, we are on the main card. We're starting off with Jack Della Mandalina. Mandalina. Madalina against Ramazan Imad, Imad. Uh Della Jack is 11 and 2, stands 5 foot 11 with a 73 inch reach. Amid is 20 and 5. He stands 5 foot 10 with a 68 and a half inch reach. Uh, Betty nods. Our Jack is minus 160. The comeback is plus 135. Ooh, are we going to go against our Russian fighter here? I like Jack. I like Jack a lot. I think a lot of people like Jack a lot. Does the Russian get it done? I mean, when you look at Imov, like, he hasn't been great in the UFC. Hasn't been great in the UFC. Has not. He just kept coming off a loss, split decision loss against Danny Roberts in his last fight seven months ago. Uh, lost to Anthony Rocco Martin. He, he, he beat the Nicholas Stolze, who he just lost last weekend, right? And David Zawadi, he won a split decision there. Zawadi's not even in the UFC anymore. Stolze might not be after last weekend. He's getting cut too. But the other thing is, is Mulata also beat that Pete Rodriguez, who was 4 0, who was like a last second, like last second fill in and he just obliterated him. I'm going to go with Imov. Ooh, Imov. I'm going to take the Russian. I, I just, it's a weird feeling. I might be wrong. The Imov by decision is, I mean, is plus 225. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Jack should win this fight. If he's everything that everybody thinks he wins, he should actually win this fight and look really good winning it. So I just weird guy. Maybe I'm totally wrong on this one, but look at their noses. Look at both of these guys' noses. They both been smashed, especially Jack. Yeah, I don't know. I have dude, Jack being on the main card shows that the UFC they they want him, right? They they want to push him. So I don't know. I'm going to go Jack on this one by decision, but I actually think it's a close fight. It, it makes me nervous, right? One other little stat that I'll throw out there. Amib is 35 years old, too. Ah. You don't think it matters because he's Russian? He's Russian, yeah. He's probably drinking, like, goat's blood and stuff. They're fine. <laughs> Next up, we got Andre Fiel against Jake Matthews. Uh, Filial is 16 and 4, stands 6 foot tall with a 74-inch reach. Jake Matthews. 17 and 5 stands 5 foot 11 with a 73 inch reach. Uh, Betty nods on this one, I believe. Let me pull those up. Uh, Filiao is a minus 140 favorite. The comeback is plus 120 on Jake Matthews. This is Filiao's my 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 favorite bet of the whole fight. Really? You're not giving any credit to. You you Matthews. know if you've listened to me before, I like Jake Matthews. I've always been on big on Jake Matthews. No, as a prospect, and I think he's very good. And I, but you know what? He's been in the UFC. He's only twenty seven years old, and he's been in the UFC since two thousand fourteen. He's been in the UFC forever since he was twenty one. Okay, lost got submitted by James Vick. Okay. Got destroyed by Kevin Lee. Okay. Lost to somebody named Andrew Holbrook. He did beat Jing Lee, 
which is a good win, the leech. Okay. But other than that, he doesn't really beat good guys. He kind of gets beat up by good guys. And I think, I think Philo, 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 oh. I, I actually think he's really good. The way he beat Miguel Baez and then the way he smoked Cameron Van, Pan, Van Camp and he's asking to stay active and more. This is his third fight in two months. I think he's kind of rolling right now. And not only do I like him to win, I like him to knock out Jake Matthews. Ooh, Philly out by KOTK. It was plus 110. And I would, I'm going to ride with you on that one because I like that bet too. <laughs> I like Philly out to win this one as well. Uh, obviously, um, 81% of Philly out's wins have been by K or TKO. Um, Jake Matthews, more, a little more of the grappler. Averages almost eight pounds per 15 minutes. He's, a good, he's a good wrestler, but, but he's, he's nothing like extraordinary. And Delial has pretty good takedown defense as well. Yeah. I, I think this is a, I think this is a rough fight for Jake Matthews, to be honest. What's the fight? What's inside the distance? Filio wins by a distance. Fight goes to the decision is plus 140. Just remember, remember Jake Matthews and Diego, and I'm just remember thinking, I'm like, Jake should be killing Diego. And he And he did yep. He didn't. Give me Philly out inside the distance at plus money. I'll take that all day long. I am oh. in. Okay. Rematch. Here we go. Excuse me, straw weight division. We have Wei Li Zhang against Joanna. Yeah, Jen Cat Jack Wags tongue twister today. <laughs> Zhang is 21 and 3, stands 5 foot 4 with a 63 inch reach. Uh Yoana is 16 and 4. She stands 5 foot 6 with a 65 and a half inch reach. Zhang coming in at a slight favorite at minus 165. The comeback is plus 140 for Yoana. Who do you like in this one? You know, I keep going back and forth on this one. And the thing that I think stands out to me the most is Joanna hasn't fought since that loss to Zhang two years ago. And Zhang, um, she loses the head kick knockout to, you know, flash knockout to Rose, which, you know, it happens. Then she comes back and loses a tough split decision, which split decision could have went either way. One judge saw it one way, the other judge saw it the other way. Um, I like that Zhang's been working with... Um, that big headed dwarf. Yeah. Um, Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo down in Arizona. I like that. I think we'll see her utilize a little bit more wrestling. I, I like Zane, man. I, I Initially during the week, I thought Joanna had plus money, but the more I dug into it, I, I'm going to go Zane on this one. So we talked about it last week. Somebody put in a rather large bet on Joanna mm -hmm. or a large bet on Whaley. And you could take action on Joanna on betopenly.com, which if anybody does bet sports, you should absolutely check out Bet Openly. Only 1% juice opposed to the 10% you get in any other book. Um, so if you are betting on fights or whatever, you need a Bet Openly account ASAP. Um, but uh, I, I watched on Bet Openly and I watched, I, I, I like to watch lines on there and, um, and there was some big money being thrown down on Wei Lee. And I said, oh, I kind of, I, I think I kind of like Joanna. Yeah. You know, getting that plus money, like whatever. And then I, and then, and then I, I did a little bit of looking. So remember when, so Rose has beaten both of them twice. Yep. Stopped both of them once and went decision once. The big difference is to me, Wei Lee had a shot to beat Rose. I thought Rose won. Yeah, I know some people thought Whaley won. I thought Rose won. Yeah, but when Joanna and Rose fought and went to a decision, everybody knew Rose won. Yeah, and I know it's not like the MMA math, but where like we've seen them fight before and whatever. I think Whaley's getting better. I think Joanna's living a little bit of the good life. I think so too. Like if you follow her on social media and stuff, she's traveling a lot. She's hanging out at the pool a lot. Like, yeah. I'm sure she's training, but she hasn't been in a fight camp in two years. Wei yeah. Lee's been in title fight camps. 
I think Whaley's too strong for her. I don't see any scenario where Joanna finishes Whaley. I could see Whaley finishing Joanna possibly. And the other thing is, is we saw, we we just had Nicole Fuga who talked about one of the things that got her into MMA, MMA was Joanna and Whaley's first fight. When they rescheduled it, everybody's like, yes. The first thing that went through my head was, it's not going to be as good as the first one. There's no way. It's not going to be as good as the first one. It's probably going to be a little anticlimactic. I, I agree. I have this gut feeling that Whaley finishes her inside the first round. I don't disagree with you on this one at, at all. I mean, and if it doesn't, I think Whaley wins rather handily. And this is probably Joanna's last fight that we see. So Whaley inside the distance plus 300. Oh, yeah. I, if oh. Whaley by decision is plus 130, give me all that. I just sprinkle by both of those because I, I, I'm with you on everything you said. I, I concur. I, like, I, I wanted to talk myself into Yuana, but Yuana said it herself. She's only really interested in title fights or number one contender contender fights. And if she loses this, it, it's kind of over. Yeah, she's she's, she's not going to hang around to be a gatekeeper. She's going to be 35 years old this year. I think if we would have seen her a little bit more active and had taken a fight after that loss, we might be having a different conversation here. I mean, she could be she could beat the Michelle Watersons of the world coming off the couch. Yuana's that good. Not a dig on Michelle. That was just her last win. It is what it is. But Wei Lee's a monster, dude. I think I think her going down and, there with Cejudo is going to make a big you know, difference. You know when some fighters take a layoff and you hear from their camp, and she's an American top team, yeah. um, you hear from their camp, oh, she's been in there. She's been working on this. And she's been working on her, you know, her grappling. She's been working on her wrestling or whatever, her – her striking, she's added some new tools. Like, we haven't heard any of that from ATT. Remember all the Colby and Jorge build up and they're interviewing people and they're interviewing everybody that's in those rooms? Guess who wasn't in those rooms? Joanna. Like, I just don't think she's been in it. I concur. It's not the same, but it's a little Connor-ish, right? Like, took some time off and now trying to come back, like, it's just not the it's not the same, and you're coming back against Wei Li, who is just an absolute monster, and I think leveling up and just getting better. You nailed it. She's keeps getting better. So we like Wei Li inside the distance, possible finish. Love Wei Li to win. Inside the distance is tasty. I have this gut feeling like that because of their five round war, like this time, like there's going to be like a dumb quick finish this time. Yeah. Like what if like. Whaley body locks her, dumps her on her head, takes her back, and chokes her out. She very well could. Uh, next up. Ooh, yes. Dude, I just love Valentina. Flyweight championships on the line. Valentina Shevchenko versus Talia Santos. Shevchenko, 22 and 3. She stands 5'5 five five with a 65 and a half inch reach. Talia is 19 and 1. She stands 5'6 five with a 68 inch reach. Quit lying. What's Talia's real record? Uh, what is her real record? Quit lying. What's her real record? I don't know. She says 19. It's 19 and 2 because she's going to get smashed tomorrow night, dog. <laughs> you know what? You know me. I always like to try to see. You know, Go like, for it. Try. I, 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 You know me. I'm a big body language person. I watch the weigh-ins. Shevchenko's just on another level. In her interview the other day. She's five levels ahead of everybody. She says, you don't. You don't become a, a martial artist you're born a mar she's like i was born a martial artist like she, she's she's the khabib yes of women where she doesn't have off nights is she the most well-rounded fighter in mma right now uh i would have said before it was mighty mouse now i would say in the ufc it's her cool. in the ufc it's her what was the fight that they she doesn't have a hole, dude? Remember how everybody said how strong and how good Jessica Andrade is? And I was just getting ready to say everybody, and she manhandled it. And she made a point to manhandle Jessica Andrade. We're talking Lauren Murphy. Everybody talks about how durable and good she is. 
She made her break. Oh, she broke in that fight. She knew she right destroyed Lauren Murphy, Nothing. which I loved every bit of because Lauren Murphy is the most annoying person on the roster, in my opinion. I can't stand it. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't see Santos winning this. I mean, just looking at her body language, it looked like it was more of a forced stare down. Like, oh, she knows, dog. She knows. Yeah. So I we're both heavily on Shevchenko and. No, there's good. nothing to be on. What's her what's her inside the distance? What's Valentina inside the distance? Minus 210? 100 something, I bet you. Let me see. I mean, that's probably, literally, it's probably the safest bet on the whole card. Shevchenko wins by KRTKO plus 180, by plus 450. Shevchenko inside the distance is plus 120. Bet. Give me that. Wow. Shevchenko wins by decision plus 110. Wow. Wait a second. So Valentina Shevchenko wins by decision is plus 110. Wins by KO TKO is plus 120. Wins by KO TKO is plus 180. Oh, yeah. How do you see her winning? She's finisher? She's ruthless, dude. She doesn't even submit girls because she doesn't have to. She'd rather just beat them up. Yeah, she's going to punish Santos. I don't see this winning. I mean, name a more brutal knockout than her head kick on Jessica I. Oh. <laughs> oh. Brutal. The only thing that I don't like about Shevchenko is her ballerina dance at the end. And how impressive is it that she freaking does her post-fight interviews in like four different languages? I promise, Frank. I appreciate the interaction. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, Jim- very awesome. Talia is, she's good. She's very good. She has earned her spot to be there and challenge for that division title. She gets smashed tomorrow night, dog. I mean, she's 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 big. Uh, I mean, you're looking at the stats, you cool. think she's a little bit bigger, but they're they're pretty even. But she's got the body type. She's a Muay Thai fighter, but Great. Shevchenko, there's, there's a billion, there's a billion percent chance in a straight up Muay Thai fight, Valentina just destroys her. Yeah, I. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. You know me. I'm always searching for the. Yeah, if there's a shot. Give it to me. At Sarah, like. So, oh, time out. Time out. Here's the thing. Yeah, you're looking for the. No, she does it easily, dog. I'm sorry. Here's the thing. Tune in Monday. We'll be able to redo, re, 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 recap this. Sure. Here's the thing. Remember, like everybody's looking for that Holly Holm who upset Ronda Rousey, right? Yes. Valentina is not worried about being a movie star. She's not doing other things. She's not trying to model. She's not looking to motherhood or the WWE or anything. She's a straight killer that this is what she is, who she is, and all she wants to be. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. She's the Khabib of this. Like, it's who she is. She's not looking for the next thing. She and she's the only reason why she doesn't fight more is because there's nobody else for her to fight. She would fight every other month if they had bodies for her. She will be uh champ champ at the end of the year. She will be champ champ by next summer after she beats Pena and becomes champ champ. 100 dude 100%. Yeah. All right, let's do the main event. We got another uh, Fighter Spotlight podcast coming up in a few minutes. All right, light heavyweight championship on the line. Glover Texera against Yuri Prozaska. Pro, Prochowski, Prochowska. Man, I am having some tongue twister. Hard time with these today. Uh, Glover well, is there's not like one like significant American on the card. We'll give you a pass. Texera is 33 and seven, stands six foot tall with a 76 inch reach. Yuri is 28 and three. And one, he stands six foot three with an 80 inch reach. Can Glover still pull some magic at 42 years old and retain his belt, Zach? This is a one of those where, dude, there, nobody's giving Glover a chance. I know. Yuri was. You know hurt. how I feel about that, right? Yuri was hurt in that dominant Reyes fight. He got he got robbed. He was out. On a, dude, he was out at one point in that Reyes fight. You know, he's been impressive with his knockouts. He's awkward. I like Glover. How I about that? I kind of do too. Dang it. 
I wanted to disagree with you, but I'm like, I, I thought we were going to fight about this one for sure. Me too. I and and people have been asking me all week. I'm like, oh, Yuri's awkward. But then, the, like I said, the more I start digging into it, it's like, Dude, what happens? See, Frank's on it too. He knows. Yeah. She, what he, happens when Glover takes him down? That, See, here's the thing: we Glover didn't just beat Yon. He destroyed Yon. Yeah. It made it look easy. L look what he did to Anthony Smith. Tiago Santos. Like, that Tiago Santos fight, he was getting rocked. Santos, some bombs he ends up getting on the ground and ends up... I think Glover... Have we seen Yuri in trouble on the ground yet? We've only seen him twice in the UFC. He's only fought... He's fought two times. He, he KO'd Ozdemir... Uh, Ozdemir... Volk and Reyes. Um, and then Reyes, he he beat CB Dalloway and Ryzen. But even the Ozdemir fight, he he's very sloppy with his striking. I think he's talented. And well, I think Yuri's phenomenal. I think he should win this fight. There's just something about me and you say it all the time. Usually, the person that everybody sleeps on and thinks doesn't have a chance, unless you're fighting Valentina Shevchenko, then you really don't have a chance. But it's. Dude, Glover's so good. Strong. That old and, man. It, and, and he's not just strong. He's durable. Like, he was getting beat up against Santos. He's getting beat up. Anthony Smith beat the crap out of him in the first round of their fight. And he couldn't put him away. And then, dude, Glover's just like this slow, steady pace. And then all of a sudden, when you slow down and he just keeps hammering on his pace, he breaks you, dude. And I don't know if Yuri can be broken, but I've never seen Yuri on the ground. I would bet a large amount of money that Glover is better on the ground, significantly. Oh, significantly better on the ground. I don't even know. I mean, I'm not. I don't have the stats pulled up, but I don't even think all of Yuri's wins are pretty much by strikes, by KO or TKO. I think if Yuri, is, I think it's going to be impressive. I think he catches him with something awkward. I'm not giving up on Glover yet, man. I'm not giving up on Glover. How? What's the inside the distance on this? Inside the distance is... Like, this does not go to decision. No, I don't think so either. Not a chance. Goes to decision is plus 330, so even Vegas. Vegas thinks this is going to end by round three. So inside the distance is... I'm looking at Texera inside the distance plus 250. Uh, Yuri is minus 150 inside the distance. Give me all of Texera inside the distance at plus 250. Uh, I don't see the fight. Oh, okay. Fight ends in round one, ends in round two, ends in round three. Sorry, I'm just going over all these. Oh, man, there's like every prop in the world on this. Holy crap. It's going to take me hours to look through all this stuff. There's well, so don't, We don't have hours, sir. Yeah, there's so many props. Uh, give, me, give me Glover inside the distance. I like it. Uh, it's I, 250. I, could see, me. I mean, I could see Yuri coming in and absolutely shutting Glover's lights off. I could see it. But here's the thing. You have to shut his lights off because if you just hurry and then try and jump on him, he will control you. He will sweep you probably, and he will submit you. Yeah, give me the value on Glover. I'll take the value. I'll I'll, I'll take the world champion that everybody's sleeping on. Got it. All right. We'll see you guys on Monday. We're gonna be back here in a couple minutes with another Fighter Spotlight podcast. Um, Monday, man, last podcast. For last me, podcast for Zach for a couple weeks. He's My last podcast as a father of three. Father of three. Congratulations. Um, uh, yeah. We didn't disagree much today. I know. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right. We'll fight about something next week. I'll fight you anytime. All right. Let's uh, get this stuff set over. We'll, we'll be back on here in a couple minutes with Dustin Crawford. We'll see you guys then. We out.